thinking about the visuals with, with Tom Ford initially, before I even started the film, uh, and with Shane Valentino, the designer, we didn't even talk, we didn't even look at pictures when we were pre- prepping the film. He said, look, I just want to talk into the, the imagery because pictures are so totemic and so big and powerful that uh, let's just find the visual direction before we start slapping pictures around because that'll just kind of uh, crowd the imagery. And uh, he was absolutely right because by the end of two weeks of talking into the, the, the film uh, with Ariane Phillips, the, the, uh, design, the uh, costume designer and, and the location manager, Stevenson Crossley and Shane Valentino, the designer, we finally found common ground that then we were able to bring pictures into and it really distilled the imagery into an area that we all felt was cohesive. visual chapters to the film there was, there was Amy Adams character uh, reading the manuscript alone at home which you know was one section there was the, the flashbacks to their youth yeah. uh, at college which had to be a more kind of nostalgic approach and then there was the, the, the sort of movie that, that Amy's imagining in her head as Susan's imagine as she's reading the manuscript so She's almost directing her own movie. He sent me this book that he's written. It's violent and it's sad, and he dedicated it to me. Did you love him? I did something horrible to him. We wanted to make her room, her uh, space, feel like, and her house feel like a horror movie. Tom Ford really wanted this sense that she was being observed, that there, almost like there was an intruder in the house, that we could see frames within frames, like Douglas Sirk half, half frames, or that the camera would be higher on her, almost observing her, like a celestial perspective. The slightly creepy angles, and you know, a very, very tiny movement, you know, so that, that it's encroaching on her the whole time. Are you sleeping? You scared me the last time we talked. You know me. I never sleep. Then the, the movie that she's seeing in her head, we wanted it to have more saturation. Definitely, uh, pre, you know, her her house had a lot of greys and darker colours and certainly less saturation. But the, the movie itself had to have a sense of it was being like almost like a western. It's a question of how serious you are about seeing justice done. Very important as a, as a harbinger of doom. Um, there, there was like the big skies that you find in westerns. It had to be a sort of larger than life and, and def- defiantly feel like a movie, like self consciously feel like a movie. Yeah. Uh, and I, we, we had fun with, with that and using the tropes of movies like the sheriff with a hat, you know, the Michael Shannon's character. The, the, everything was like the. the Jake's check shirt and red. All those color things were very carefully chosen, emblematic colors, the way that a designer would do so on a movie. What are we gonna do? And then the, the, the flashbacks were sort of more innocent, had more levity, a little bit more movement, more accidental and, and uh, a little bit paler and I used diffusion on those as well to help with uh, their their faces being younger yeah. although I think a, a little, little bit of work was done maybe in post with uh, a little bit of CGI to remove the odd wrinkle or two nobody gives away what you did nobody 